So today I'm going to make a remote control tester. Really simple thing. All you need is a photodiode, and in my case a BNC jig, because I want to put this onto my oscilloscope. So I'm going to plug it into my front of my oscilloscope, put on a remote controller and test it and check the pulses and see what frequencies are coming out of it and that sort of stuff. And simple, simple thing. I think you used to be able to buy these things maybe, or you can just make yourself. In this case I'm using a 3mm infrared photodiode. So this one here is spec to 9 to 40 nanometers. This is what I'm using. You could use something else, you don't have to use this particular one, but as long as it's an infrared diode, it will do the job. I've got this connector here, which I've salvaged from something else. I had some old LCI meter cables, which I repurposed. So I've got this connector, which I can probably adapt to fit this photodiode into. So let's cut myself some heat shrink to put over this photodiode. So when I mount it into the casing, I'll go with this one here. It won't short out on this spring here in case it flexes and stuff around. Since I've got all length we want, so I'll put it like that. That one positive, the long leg, is going to go straight into the connector, and this one is going to go onto that crimp. So that length there, I'll make sure I'm protected down to about here. Okay, so it won't actually short out. Then I have another piece as well. So that's all right. So I need to come down to about there. So about that length there. So let's go from there to there. I don't want to be around the outside of the photo diode. I want to be just on it. So it's got something to hold on to. But I don't want to shield the outside of it. So that'll do that part, all right? So that'll go over the outside of that. Then I also need a thinner piece to go along the leg all the way down so it won't be shorting out until it gets down to the end of the connector. So if I can find the end, the end there's an end in here somewhere. If I can find it. Two hours later. Just there. So we'll cut a piece of that off as well. So that piece there, that piece there. Let's shove these on now. See, little piece sticking at the end, that's perfect. So I'm going to heat shrink that one on first, then I'll do the other one. Okay, now we've got that bit done. I need to attach the positive to the center pin of that connector. So I'm just going to get some solder here. It's going to Get it ready. Like that and the same on the connector itself. A bit awkward trying to do this because of the camera. All right, I'm going to slide that down inside here. Die back the negative one. That's going to be fine. I'll sort that out soon. Try and get that inside the connector pin if I can. There we go. There you go. That's in there. Good enough, it's not wonderful. I might touch it back up again once I've got it all stabilised. Now this other one, you want to fold that round and just solder it onto this. Bring it around like this and we'll just solder it onto the outside. Crimping it is probably going to be a good idea as well. I'm just going to do this so it holds it nicely. Alright, that's all. Okay. Let's use my pliers for this. Just so it's snug. And then I'll solder that onto there. Okay, that's soldered on there, soldered on the centre pin, so that should be good. Now this should just slip over. Okay, that's the collar screwed right down. The photo diode is sticking at the end, just as I wanted it to. Right, let's try it out. Got this hooked up in the front panel, as you can see just there in channel 1. There we go, remote control pulses. Let's try the remote. That one's working too. So what we could actually do is change the uh, trigger to be a normal trigger. Maybe bring the time base down slightly more as well. Do one like that. There we go. There's the pulses. Bring it over here and zoom in a bit. And you actually see the frequency in here as well. It says 37 kilohertz in the bottom there. We can confirm that a remote control is actually working or not. Let's try one of these other remotes. Yeah, that's doing something. And let's try this other remote here. This one's a bit dodgy. Doesn't always work. As we can see, this is a remote for my camera, which is the original one, which is worn out basically. 
but the actual camera itself's got a problem too. This is a replacement remote, and this one is actually putting pulses out. So, I can do the same thing.